Hi, I'm Michael Lachman. I'm faculty at the Santa Fe Institute. I work uh, mainly on the origin of life today, these days, and today I want to talk to you about DNA. Here we see a DNA molecule. We know DNA has four bases and simple pairing. G goes to C and A goes to T. And we kind of imagine that somehow evolution met this magic molecule that has all these properties and that's how life emerged or that's how we got DNA, just from the properties of the DNA. And in these two lectures, I want to show you that this is not such a right, a correct view. And DNA is much more noisy than we think. And the pairing and the bases are much more noisy than that. DNA has a mutation rate of 10 to the minus 10 errors per replication per base, which is a really amazingly low rate. And I will go a bit into how we get such a low rate in the next lecture. In this lecture, I want to talk about the bases. And for this, I need to go a bit into the structure of nucleotides. I'm not a chemist. I will probably make a few mistakes. And so you will not need to go very deeply into the chemistry, but it's still very interesting to see the structure. So let's look at just adenine. Here's adenine. You see that it has a, the a nucleo base in red. Uh, in addition, it has this 5 uh, ring, the de deoxyribose. And in addition, it has the phosphate group. The ribose and the phosphate group together make, make the backbone. And we will not talk much about the backbone in this lecture. The nucleobase is the thing that then uh, pairs. At this point, it's also good to talk about RNA. So RNA also has bases. Let's look at adenine on the RNA. Adenine on the RNA looks almost identical, except that instead of deoxyribose, it has ribose. So you can see that uh, at the place where the DNA has nothing, ri the ribose has a, a, an OH, a hydroxy group. And that's the main, di main difference between RNA and DNA, the only chemical difference. This hydroxy group caused the RNA to be more active and also causes the DNA to be less active and more stable. Let's look at all the uh, bases of DNA and RNA. So DNA has four bases, as we said, G, C, A, T. RNA also has four bases, G, C, A, U. Instead of T, it has U. And if we compare a uracil to, to thymine, we can see that the difference is just one single methyl group here. Uh, this because of the methyl group, actually thymine is sometimes also called 5-methyluracil. The name comes from the fact that the methyl, the methyl group sits on the fifth base as counted counterclockwise from the end that connects it to the ribose. The counting on thymine and the other pyrimidines is very simple. It starts from the nitrogen that's closest to the ribose, connects to the ribose, and goes towards the other nitrogen, in this case counterclockwise, simply one, two, three, four, five, six round the ring. The counting on the purines is a bit more complicated. Uh, in this case, you start from the nitrogen that's furthest away from the ribose and count again towards the other nitrogen around the ring. And when you finish the first ring, one, two, three, four, five, six, you go in the other ring to the, again to the nitrogen that's furthest away from the ribose, seven, eight, nine, towards the nitrogen that's connected to the ribose. So we see that Thymine is a modified uh, uracil, 5-methyluracil. There is many modified uh, nuclear bases. Here I just listed 12. So here we have the 5 that we know already, the, five, the 4 on the DNA and uracil. And in addition, I listed a couple more uh, modified bases that you can see. One is uh, xanthine and several others. Uh, there is actually a, a database online that lists all the known DNA modifications that have been observed actually uh, in nature. And currently this, uh, it, it includes 44 uh, modified nuclear bases, that, nuclear bases that actually have been observed on DNA in nature. In addition, there is the few gray ones that have been produced uh, artificially. Uh, what do these nuclear bases do? So one of them Right, in addition to the four in the DNA, we know one is uracil. What does uracil do in the DNA? Uh, mostly I'll talk about it in the next lecture, but there is 
one bacteriophage, PBS1 and also another PBS2, that are known to have, instead of tyrosine, they contain only uracil. So all ty tyrosine uh, are replaced by uracil, or maybe uh, it could also be that this bacteriophage is before uh, tyrosine was introduced in DNA, it could, that it could be that it's also more primitive. It's currently functional in this bacteriophage, it's, it protects its DNA, the uracil. Uh, another important modification is 5-methylcytosine, uh, or 5-MC. 5-methylcytosine uh, is, is, uh, is the most important uh, modification, and actually when people talk about DNA modification or DNA methylation, they usually just talk about 5-MC, uh, 5-methylcytosine. Even though uh, cytosine can be uh, methylated in many other ways and DNA can be modified in many other ways, when people talk about uh, methylation of DNA, this is what they mean. Uh, let's look at the methylcytosine. So you see that it's, uh, there's a methyl group on the fifth uh, location. And usually, this methylation sits in the DNA in locations where there is C followed by G, and then on the other strand then there is a G and a C. Uh, it's called CPG. So when the C is methylated this, and the C on the other side is methylated, the DNA now replicates uh, the daughter strands that, that come from the old molecule contain a methylation, but the new strands that were generated don't have methylation. So you see here that uh, the DNA polymerase is able to go over the methylation. It doesn't have a problem there, but it doesn't replicate the methylation. Uh, now there is an enzyme that recognizes this, what's called heavy methylated site, where only one side is methylated and the other not. Uh, this is uh, the DNA methyltransferase 1. There are several other methyltransferases, but I'm now talking only about one. So DNMT1 recognizes these sites that are hemi methylated and methylates also the other side. Once that happened, the methylation replicated to both of the daughter molecules. So the methylate, methylation now went across cell division. And that's an important feature of this methylation. It can transfer uh, epigenetic states across cell division, sometimes even across generations. And it carries information about, for example, uh, when a cell is a liver cell or brain cell, part of this information is carried on this uh, methylation site across cell division, because it's important that the cell remembers that it's a liver cell even after it divides. This uh, 5MC is often called the fifth base on the DNA. Uh, and some of its modification, one of its modification is uh, hydroxymethylcytosine, as you can see here in the middle of the, the sequence. It is actually also important in, uh, in uh, uh, differentiation. And so this is sometimes now called the sixth base on the DNA because it has uh, such important functions. An additional uh, important methylation is 6-methyladenine, 6-MA. Uh, this occurs uh, more, as far as we know, more often in bacteria, where it carries information about uh, the old strand versus the new strand. Let's see how it works. So it, it is also in a palindromic sequence in GATC, which is then on the other side CTAG. And when both sides are methylated, again, after replication, it's hemimethylated, and then there is an enzyme, dimethylase, that recognizes this and methylates uh, the, the, uh, the daughter strand. And again, we duplicated this pattern, but this enzyme doesn't act so quickly, and uh, after DNA methylation, this then carries information about which strand was old and which strand is new, which is then used in DNA repair, as we'll see in the next lecture. Modifications don't only occur on DNA, they also occur in RNA. Actually, there's many more RNA modifications than DNA modifications. There's again an RNA uh, database of uh, modifications. And here I just listed the state in 2012, then 109 modifications were known. You can see that most of them are in tRNAs and they occur in archaea, bacteria, and eukaryotes, but several occur also in other RNAs, like in uh, ribosomal RNA and others. Uh, in, RN in tRNAs, they're fu definitely functional. They often uh, modify the, the wobble position, 
that then is able to recognize several, diff several codons for one amino acid. So they have an important function there. A. Now let's look at what we learned in this lecture. So we saw that there's many DNA modifications or non-standard uh, nuclear, ba nuclear bases. Uh, some are functional, some are non-functional. There's 112 RNA modifications. Many of these modifications on the DNA survive replication, so the polymerase can go across them with no problem. Uh, some are even replicated with additional enzymes. Uh, there's uh, several, like I said, that are functional currently in differentiation and in, in also have function in uh, bacteria. In RNA, they, they have important function, and there's probably many more, other, many more functions that we don't know yet. This is a, a fairly new field, even though a lot of the insights were gained uh, in the 70s or earlier. Um, how are these modifications generated? They're generated sometimes by enzyme activity, as we saw when methylation is uh, transferred or in other cases. Sometimes it's through damage, so when UV light hits the DNA, it can generate, uh, uh, it can cause these uh, modifications to appear. Sometimes it's through misincorporation, so if a, a, nu a, a nucleotide is already modified when, it, when the polymerase puts it in, it will uh, be misincorporated, and this is how these things appear. It's interesting to understand where these modifications came, came from. It could be that they're uh, fairly new. They appeared after DNA evolved and, uh, and now we use them for various functions in, in differentiation or in neuro neural circuitry. But it is also possible that they show us something about how uh, DNA and RNA looked earlier, the primitive world. Maybe this is when the DNA replication machinery wasn't as sophisticated as, as it is now, it could be that man, many different enzymes replicated uh, various patterns. And it could be that this is, this is what it looked like till DNA evolved enough to look so nice and be able to replicate such clean patterns. Thank you.